Um, for this side of the room, I'm going to be doing this speech in Brummie, but there'll be subtitles on the DVD, so <laughs> you'll understand. Um, please, please hold your applause, because I know you're not going to need it. Um, I really do look forward to reading this speech that Sean prepared for me in advance. <laughs> Uh, but bear with me, because I am under a lot of pressure. Sean has told me that if I do a good job, he'll let me be the best man at his next wedding. So. <laughs> uh, for, the, for those of you that don't know me, congratulations. Um, I'm, a, I'm Sean's younger brother, Matt. But in our family, I'm known as the youngest. I'll give you an example. When mum and dad introduce us to people, they go... This is Sean. He's about to marry a lovely woman. He's a wonderful guy with a great career. And this is Matt, our youngest. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm three years younger than Sean. And like most sequels, I'm bigger, I look better, but ultimately I'm pretty disappointed. <laughs> I've, uh, I've got to be honest, being the less good-looking brother, it's not always been easy. But now Sean's getting married, he doesn't have to worry about that. Uh, I, met, uh, I met Sean way back in the late 90s. Um, it, was, it was a hectic time. We met on the 16th of August in 1996. Uh, which is also known in some circles as the greatest day in human history. <laughs> uh, I'll be honest, I don't remember the day well. I was going for a lot of the time. But, um, I, know, I know that me and Sean, we shared an instant connection. We both immediately disliked each other. He had this thing where he'd always grab up my ear and pull it. I don't know why. And to make things worse, our mum insisted that we wear the same outfits every time, despite the fact that we're not twins. <laughs> and what a shock, I've been called Sean about 26 times today, and it's his wedding. <laughs> Growing up, as many of the family friends will know, we actually had a very big brotherly rivalry, because we argued and we bickered over everything. Who had control of the TV? Football? The PlayStation 1? Top Trumps? the PlayStation 2, wrestling, food, which one of us dad disliked more. We, um, we bickered over everything, and then I grew two feet taller, and mysteriously, he started to leave me alone. Which, <laughs> and I, and I never understood that. I was, but a lot of it came from the fact that we actually have very, very different personalities. Sean is kind, or earnest, he has his heart on his sleeve, he's confident and talented. And me? Well, I'm the youngest. <laughs> it may be hard to believe this now, but growing up, he was always bigger and stronger than me. So I had to try and outsmart him. My favourite tactic was to use big words that he didn't know and convince him that it meant it was a compliment. So I spent the summer of 2006 calling him an imbecile. And I managed to convince him that it meant legend. So, Sean, I just want to let you know, you look like a massive imbecile today, mate. <laughs> but the, that rivalry, it changed as we grew up. Well, as Sean grew up and I stayed the same. It started to die down and a real friendship started to form. I'll never forget my 18th birthday. He sent me a card with a fiver in it with a message, Happy birthday, Matt. Mum made me get this. <laughs> oh, sorry, just thinking about it, it gets me a bit emotional, so we'll, move, we'll skip this bit. As Sean has already mentioned, he was a very different person before he met Orla. Working at Alton Castle, then Samuel Academy, and of course, the Abbey. His life revolved around football matches, watching football matches, betting on football matches, spending recklessly, and get his dr getting drunk with his mates. I can't think who that reminds me of. <laughs> But meeting Orla was a very big turning point for Sean, and it's a testament to her just how much his life has turned around in the time since meeting. So thank you, Orla, for helping my brother.
I have infinite respect for my brother, up to a point. Um, <laughs> and some of you will know that subconsciously, I always end up trying to be just like him. Growing up, if he dressed a certain way, I had to dress that way. If he played a video game, I had to play it. If he listened to a type of music, I had to listen to it. I wanted his friends to be my friends, even Mason. <laughs> Sorry, uh, let me just repeat that for emphasis. Even Mason. <laughs> Going through childhood, <laughs> Sean became house captain at Holy Nine Primary School. So I became house captain at Holy Nine Primary School. He then went to Stuart Bathurst, where he performed in productions. So I did the same. He then surprised everyone by going to Samuel Academy for sixth form and being voted as head boy. So again, I did the same. It feels as though for my 22 years, I've just been trying to live up to my brother's example. And I can honestly say that in marrying a girl as awesome as all of Mark's, and in having a day, all of Harris, and in having a, a day as good as today, that my big brother has given me something else to live up to. That brings me on to the Orla portion of the speech, and much like her, I'll keep it short. <laughs> Actually, before that, I should mention, uh, Sean has asked me to refrain from mentioning his ex-girlfriends today. And sadly, that's cut my speech short by a massive five seconds. <laughs> Ironically, that would actually be longer than if he was going to talk about my girlfriends. Uh, my plus one is named Kieran Doody, so... <laughs> I think we can all agree, and it's been said before, Orla looks absolutely stunning today. Yeah. I must admit, I was half expecting you to walk down the aisle in jeans and converse, and I'm a bit annoyed you didn't, to be honest. <laughs> I remember the first time that I ever heard about Orla. It was back when I was 17. Sean told me that he had found a girlfriend at the primary school he was working at, and when I saw her for the first time, I was really worried that he was going to go to prison. <laughs> But then, then I met her. <laughs> I'll get a smack for that later. <laughs> but uh, then I met her, and I realised she was kind, intelligent, insightful, and funny, and she treated me like a brother from the first time I've met her. I remember she sat me down and attempted to talk to me about Birmingham City's football results. At that point, I knew that if Sean didn't marry her, I probably would. <laughs> I got the cheap red to the stick on that one, thank you. <laughs> but seriously, Ola, you're a beautiful, kind soul, an awesome person. You make my brother happy, and I'm absolutely delighted to call you my sister. <laughs> and obviously, today is mainly about congratulations for Sean and Ola, but we also have to thank them. They've put an incredible effort in today. I think we can all agree the wedding was fantastic and the venue is also fantastic. So thank you, Sean and Orla. All that effort and preparation makes me feel really bad about writing this speech in the hotel toilet last night at 3 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> but I must say, Orla, again, you're fantastic. The only thing holding you back is your taste in men and your terrible dance moves. <laughs> And I'm, I'm not asking this for the speech. Please don't do the worm tonight. Please. <laughs> now, of course, none of you guys will know this, but I've already privately congratulated Sean. I took him to one side and I said, brother, this is going to go down as the best weekend of your life. And I really did feel that was a fitting end to the stag do in Cardiff. <laughs> It was, it's great to have all the lads as well from the Stag in Cardiff and Dave. <laughs> the, the only man ever to get chucked out of a Weatherspoons pub. <laughs> it, was, it was really great to have that though. And Sean, I know a lot of the times we like to laugh at your expense as a group. But it's mainly because we know that you're an adult and we're not.
you're getting married to a beautiful girl today, and most of us still drink in the Scott Arms and bet on second division Swedish football. <laughs> to go a little bit more serious now, and it's already been mentioned, we are very, very privileged as a family to have so many grandparents here with us today. On all our sides, we have the lovely granny. Yay. Okay, Catherine. For those of you that haven't met her, haven't had the chance to speak to her, I sincerely recommend that you do so. <laughs> I spoke to her yesterday and I said, Granny, how does it feel that you're going to see Orla walk down the aisle? She says, Matt, it only felt like yesterday that Orla was going to sleep with a dummy. <laughs> Isn't it funny how history repeats itself? On, uh, on our side of the family, we have our dad's parents, Sheila and George. Thank you very, very much for being here with us today. And on our mother's side of the family, we have Jean and David, who have travelled from Manchester. Thank you very much for being here today. I'm 22 years of age, and Sean is 26 years of age? Something like that. Um, to, be, to be at that age, and to still have both sets of grandparents in our life, we are very, very lucky. And we're very privileged to have you both here with us, well, for you. Thank you very much. But we also want to spend a moment to talk about people that can't be with us today. Obviously, it's already been mentioned that Granny Felicity over in Ireland couldn't make it. She's in all our thoughts, of course. And also, we want to talk about Orla's grandfathers, Harry and Brendan, who sadly no longer with us, but we know will be looking down on us today. So a round of applause. It's also an honour to be here with the parents of the lovely couple. On Orla's side, we have Richard, aka the Sheriff. <laughs> and we have the lovely Maeve. And it was a beautiful speech from you, Rich. Thank you for stealing all my jokes. <laughs> so to Rich and Maeve, I want to congratulate you. You have raised a kind, beautiful and stunning daughter. And I must say, Orla's pretty decent as well. <laughs> On Sean's side of the family, we have our dad Stephen and the gaffer Deborah, who was kind enough to take time out of her day-to-day -day role of running Great Bar. Uh, this speech hasn't even went on Facebook yet, and my mum's already shared it, so thank you, mum. <laughs> to my mum and dad, myself and Sean love you very, very much. We're very glad you're here today, and I want you to know a 50% a success record is nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> I hope that all four of you seriously enjoy this day. The two people in the middle of this table are good and kind people, and they're a tribute to the, guy, the job that you guys did as parents. So congratulations to you. I don't know what, I don't know what to do here, because this was the part where I was going to make a joke about people travelling and say that, oh, people have come all the way from Birmingham. Yeah. I've got to skip that now, thank you. <laughs> Honestly, though, thank you all for coming today from such incredible distances. It really is remarkable to see just how far people will come for a free meal. <laughs> it's a great privilege for me and an honour to stand in front of all the people that Orla likes best and all of Sean's friends who Orla hates the least. <laughs> It is my greatest privilege to stand here today as the best man to my hero, my big brother. Aww. Nobody tell him I said that. <laughs> I love you, mate. Uh, and also to welcome my new sister, Orla Oberfemi Ferris. <laughs> welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to leave you with a quote. They say, you don't marry the person that you could live with. You marry the person that you couldn't live without. And I think that's a perfect summary of you two people. I wish you all the most happiness in the world. I am privileged to have you both as part of my life. And I want you to know that I love you very much. Mum made me say that. <laughs>
So I ask you now, although you've had to do it many times, please stand and raise a glass to Mr. and Mrs. Ferris. Where's the bar? <laughs>